watching ET Now. Welcome to Talking Technicals, I'm Damini Kumari and here's a brand new show for you that will help you demystify all of that technical jargon that you read about and you see on TV and it's going to take you a step further by actually helping you read charts yourself and figure out your own trades. When as we love to say on ET now to buy, sell or hold. So after joining us for a couple of sessions on this show, you will be able to make sense of a lot of terms, interesting ones like cup and handle, double bottom formation, inverted hammer formation, there you see, and the favorite one that I have is dead cat bounce. That and a whole lot more, you're going to understand all of that. And remember one thing, this show is uh, not just um, uh, for the economist or the mathematician or the engineer, it's for each and every one of you. It's not about complicated mathematical theories like the ones that you can see playing out there, but it's more about understanding human psychology. Now, what does human psychology have to do with technical analysis, you ask? And that's a fair question. And here's the answer. We all have set behavioral patterns that repeat themselves time after time after time. So panic selling and frenzied buying is something that we are all familiar with and we all do it. Now, take a look at the graph of the Sensex right here. And we all know what happened in January of 2008. And after that, there's been that long bear market. Now, of course, in hindsight, we all have six by six vision. And you can say that if we had sold in January 2008 and stayed out of the market till, say, maybe uh, March, April of 2009, we could have made a lot of money. But yeah, it's easier said than done because when you're sitting in that seat at that point of time, you're actually really panicking. You want to get out of your portfolio because you're seeing a lot of losses. So all of this has got to do with uh, technical analysis. And the thing is, and it may sound a little cliche, but history always repeats itself. So we do this thing time after time, after time, as I said, and we see the market cycles. So look at the graph once again of the Sensex. And this is just one graph. There are many more that will prove the point that you see the ups and the downs, and they're all part of the game. And it's mind games. That's what it's all about. Who is thinking what? And that's the big question which we try and understand. Try and understand the human psyche and how people think. And let's take a look at this interesting picture and figure out really how different minds work. That's that's the picture for you. There are two women hidden in that picture. And just take a minute to see what you find yourself. And then we'll show you the two women in there. There's a pretty young woman and there is an old lady. So let's take you to the next picture. That's the one of the profile of a pretty young woman with a feather uh, coming out from the top of the hat on her hair. And if you extend the picture down, you will now see that's the, the lips and the protruding chin and the crooked nose. That actually makes the profile of an old woman. So you put the whole picture together, you can see it's either an old woman wearing a white scarf or you can see a young woman in a profile with a very fancy hat and some fur around her shoulders. It's the same picture, but you look at it two ways and you get a different story each time. And it's the same when we are reading charts. Uh, for some, the charts read buy and for some, they read sell. It's the same chart, but that's the beauty of um, the whole thing. And we'll try and get and dig deeper into all of this. Okay, now it's time to get to work and introduce to you our special guest on the show. It's Dr. C.K. Narayan. And you've seen him regularly on our market shows, but when he's guiding you with trading calls, but now here we're actually going to get him to tell you how he actually comes up with those trading calls. But before we get to him, here's a closer look at the personality behind the trader. You've heard Dr. C.K. Narayan on ET Now every day as he splices charts and lays them bare in front of you so you know why to buy, sell or hold the stock. With his magical precision, he predicted the end of the bull market in 2007, a call that built his fortune. Forecasting is his style, trading his passion and the stock market his muse. So we got this dog who has some wealth tips for you. Wanna be as good as him? Well stay tuned to VT now for the next half an hour and take a few leaves out of his book. Well, that's Dr. Narayan for you. On our show, we will pick his brains to get a sense of how he comes up with those trading calls. Well, Dr. Narayan, welcome to our show. And uh, it's going to be a fruitful series, I'm sure, at the end of which uh, many of our viewers will be able to tell you a thing or two, learning from you. Sure. Uh, but uh, trading psychology is what we spoke about. Show us some graphs and tell us really what it is about a technical analysis that really works. See, the entire the scenario about technical analysis is being focused on what the market is saying to us. The key thing is the market is always saying something to us all the time. Now, if you take a look at the graph of the Sensex or the Nifty that, uh, you know, over the time during 2008, you'll actually find that you had this huge decline from the top, but then you had them in a series of slopes. Now, look at this last slope. It is the one 
of the uh, slopes which has got the sharpest slope and this is where the declines end and the de when the declines end the market is actually shouting out saying that go long in this market but what we hear in this market is go short go short right in a very similar manner if you look at the market going up you will find this is a i mean here is a chart of silver look at silver go up this was in a huge uptrend and look at the last leg of the uptrend which has been an extremely sharp slope so markets actually say a lot of things to us all the time we need to learn how to hear it how to interpret it and then how to handle our own behavior at the market peaks the market shouts and that is the only time we hear the real deal is to hear it along the way so that we can make some money out of it interesting there uh, it's really about investor psychology and that spells itself out on the chart so forget about what you want the markets to do just see what they're doing and interpret that and that will hold you in very good stead all right so um, let's start with the simplest technique of all and uh, this one doesn't even require a price chart yeah it's quite simple to calculate even on a calculator but you can do it easier on an excel sheet i'm talking about the moving averages the daily moving averages so these are basically as the name suggests are averages over a period of time it could be over 7 days 50 days 200 days and there are different ways of calculating these averages one is of course the simple way which is uh, you take say for 9 days you will take the data for 9 days and you'll divide it by 9 you'll get the average for today next day you remove the ninth day and you add the tenth day and you keep calculating this every day exponential moving average is the same technique really but it uses a slightly different formula so the most recent data points or the most recent prices get more weightage in that calculation but you don't have to worry about the difference between the two you might see both on your charts either of them will actually uh, do the trick for you and what we see is when we put these uh, averages on a graph and you'll see that coming up on your screen say the 9 day the 50 day and the 200 day moving average what's important and what a lot of analysts look for is the crossovers that's when one moving average line actually cuts across the other one so if you have your short term moving average crossing up it's a positive crossover um, and it signals a buy when it crosses down the short term moving average crosses below um the long term moving average it's a negative uh, trend indicator so dr narayan we spoken briefly about what uh, moving averages are let's use um, some charts to indicate buy and sell signals as a result of this yeah i think the ideal thing to look at in this case would be uh, a chart an intraday chart of uh, maybe state bank of india prior to the results you see here we spoke about the crossovers what state bank had shown much ahead of the results see this is the day of the results actually it had actually broken down shown a negative crossover over the price much ahead of the results and leading up to the results you had the price is moving in a lateral band but not really crossing over above the moving average as the results were about to be declared the prices again dropped so the entire thing had you used it as a lead signal you would have been very well placed in order to take a short positions along with the results as and when they were announced and you see for yourself the big drop right Well we've seen two interesting chart patterns based on the daily moving averages sounds logical but here's the thing if everybody followed this indicator then how are we smarter than the rest of the market so essentially what i'm saying is that if you see the buy signal where your short term average cuts across the long term average and you get a positive uh, a spike indication and everybody goes into buy the price moves up very quickly and it goes away from your the buying price so at that moment basically you want to do the trade but it's gone away in terms of price already so in a sense what i'm asking is if everybody knows these uh, moving averages and other indicators do they defeat themselves do they then become meaningless dr narayan yes indeed this is one of the problem areas which we do uh, speak speak about every now and then but i think what really comes in the way is human frailty you know people always want to try to be a little extra smart all the time they want to be ahead of the others they want to buy a little earlier than the others they want to sell a little earlier than the others so they actually second guess the indicator you know and if enough people actually were to do the second guessing part the prices would never go as far as doing a crossover with with a moving average as a result of which it would look like the signal has actually failed but it has not failed it has actually human frailty which prevents the signal from happening when this keeps happening fairly often sooner or later everybody gives up on trying to be smart because the so called indicator is not working but it's not that the indicator is not working as soon as people stop being extra smart the indicator will again work again uh, work again and of course uh, there are times when different indicators give contrarian signals and there are times when moving average indicators actually do not uh, work they give you wrong signals so we need to be aware of all this there are periods of sideways movement dr narayan when these moving averages clearly don't give good signals 
Yeah, I I mean you can take a set of any any set of charts. When it is trended, the moving averages will work sublimely, right? The problem really comes when it gets into a kind of sideways moment because by definition, the moving average will always be in the middle of a you know a moment which is largely sideways. It is at such points of time that we will have to bring in some sort of additional tools like adding a trend line, you know, which will save us from acting prematurely on this or you could probably add a trend line like this. So all would resort to looking at uh, the, let's see, the candlestick charts and you look at the set of candlesticks and the trend line and the moving average line and then take your breakout or breakdown signals only once the additional tools have given you an extra signal. Sideways markets are difficult to handle, but we have ways and means also to deal with to them deal by bringing in additional things. The moving average by not giving us a trend signal also gives us a signal in reverse that you're actually in a range and therefore range trading basis is called for. And that's something we'll do on one of our uh, uh, future uh, shows. So make sure that you tune in every week for that. But uh, you know, moving average is a very interesting indicator, but as we know, we can't uh, get it right every time. And here's the dreaded question. What happens when you actually get it wrong? <laughs> well, don't fret because it does not mean the end of the world. Most successful traders get their trades right only 30% of the time. So what is it that protects them, uh, the balance, 70% of the time? It's actually just something as boring as trading discipline. And we'll talk about that uh, after the break.